Hi everyone, Snowflake Dan here. Today we're going to be covering over how to set up DBT with Snowflake so that you could have both a development and a production environment. So let's get to it. So here in the tutorial, this tutorial will be linked in the description of the video, we'll start with the requirements. So you will need a Snowflake account, like a trial, uh, a DBT account, they have a developer account, it's free for one developer, and a Git repository because we need to store our code somewhere, which is also free. So let's start off first with Snowflake. There's a great warning here. If you do plan to use MFA during this tutorial, I highly suggest to enable MFA caching so that you only have to authenticate once. Uh, for this tutorial, we're not gonna do that. We're just gonna use normal username and passwords. So when we first get started, we're gonna have some code here. We're gonna copy this code We'll go over to our Snowflake account. I've got a fresh new Snowflake account. I'll click on projects, then worksheets, and we'll start. We'll add a new worksheet. I'll paste it in there, and you'll see that a few things we're gonna do today. So one, we're gonna create a database called DBT. We're gonna remove the default uh, public schema, and we're gonna create a warehouse called development and production. And following that, we're gonna create a new user called service underscore dbt. This is gonna be our service account when we run our production job that it's gonna to connect to. And here it's asking us to put in a password. I'm gonna put in a password as an example. Of course, yours should be a lot better than that password, but this is just a demo. So the last thing is, is we'll grant it sysadmin. We're just gonna keep our role-based access control super simple here. We're gonna use the sysadmin for everything, for the developers and the production job. Uh, this is just a way to keep it simple and limit complexity. So we'll select all of that and we'll hit run. And we've completed all those tasks. So we'll head back to the tutorial and the next step is, is to jump over to DBT and to start setting up our project. So we'll go over to DBT. We'll want to give it a name. In this case, I'm just going to give it my name. I'll click continue. And then the, we'll have to set up a connection. So of course, our connection will be Snowflake. So I'll click add new connection. I'll select Snowflake. And then it'll ask us to start putting in some information related to our account so that you can connect when you set up your development credentials. So the first thing we'll want to do is get the account, uh, our Snowflake account. So to do this, we'll head over to Snowflake. We'll go to the bottom left hand corner. I'm going to move myself around. We'll, we'll hover over our account. We'll hover over the account again and we'll copy the account identifier. Now, there's something special with the account identifier is that when we paste it in as our account, we'll actually want to change the dot to a dash. Now, this allows us to use what's known as our organizational URL. And the way we think about that is the first portion is the organization name. The second is the account name. So in Snowflake, you could have multiple accounts underneath an organization. I have one called sharing same region. Next thing we'll want to add is a name. So our database name or the name as in our database name is what we created earlier. And then the warehouse is development. Again, we created this earlier and I will show that in a second. Um, for our role, we'll want to use sysadmin. Um, because that's, again, what we decided to do at the beginning to limit complexity. And to showcase this, we can go into our databases. And we'll notice that we have a database called DBT. And additionally, if we go to our warehouses, we'll notice we have two warehouses, one development and one production. For this example, when we're setting up our development connection or development credentials, we'll just keep it as development for the default. So we'll click save. And then you'll see that our connection has been created, but it hasn't brought us back to uh, the setup page. So if we go back to our tutorial and we scroll down, we'll notice that the tutorial kind of covers this. We'll want to go to credentials, our project, and then click on the link. So if we go back, we'll go to credentials, our project, 
And then it says we're not finished with the development, so let's continue. We'll select our connection. We'll put in our credentials. So this would be uh, the user who's gonna do the first development. So this is my personal credentials. So here I'll put in my email because that's my username. I'll put in my password. I'll put in a schema. So this is the schema that's gonna show up when you build something in development. So just following kind of best practices, what I like to do is put in dbt underscore my first initial last name. So D Wilzak for Daniel Wilzak. So that everyone knows who's working in the DBT environment or in that development environment understands one, this is a dbt schema. Two, this is being used by me. So we'll click test connection. DBT will go and connect. If you're using MFA, this is the point where it'll send you a notification saying, hey, someone's trying to log in. You'll click accept, and then you'll get the completed status like we did here. So we'll click save. And the next thing that DBT will wanna do is hook up to your Git account. So we'll click on GitHub, and then we'll connect GitHub account. Now, I've already gone through this authentication process, so it will kind of jump for. And so now the DBT connection or the, the repository connection has been added. And now you can see the GitHub repository has been added and you can see the three repositories I do have. I've kind of skipped over the process of uh, connecting or authenticating because I've already done so, but if you follow the process, you should see the same result. So I've got one here called DBT. I could simply click on it and then it will say, hey, congratulations, you're all set up. So we'll click Start Development in the IDE. Great, and now we can see that our uh, development environment has been started. We don't have anything inside of here except for a readme because this is a fresh new repository. What we'll wanna do is click initialize the dbt project. This will add some files into our repository as an example demo. So the first thing we'll wanna do because we just wanna get this thing working, we're not interested in kind of learning dbt. There's already great courses out there to learn it. Um, so what we'll wanna do is go to models, examples, and my first dbt model. What we'll want to do is actually delete this section of union null and select null. The reason for this is because dbt has already set up a test here that says uh, fail if it's uh, a not null. And so we're just removing that not null so that we can build the uh, build our, for our first models. Great, so we've deleted it. What we'll want to do is do a dbt build. This will build all of our models inside of our Snowflake account and also in DBT. Great, so what do I mean by build them in Snowflake? So if we switch back to our Snowflake account, go to our data. Now, if we go to our DBT uh, database and then we click on our new schema that was added, and then we go to the tables, we can now see our first two models have been built or first two tables have been built. So great. Our development is ready to go. If your goal was to get dbt dev kind of working and not interested in production, this is where you would stop. So let's continue on and kind of the next phase of this will really be setting up the production environment so that we can run this on a schedule or really run the main branch on a schedule. So we'll switch back to our dbt account. We're happy with it. We've built everything. We'll commit the change. So I'll just simply give this a message of init and I'll commit those changes. Now, dbt will make this uh, make our life a little easier. We'll create a pull request. We'll create the pull request itself. We'll give it a description. Again, just init, create the pull request. We'll merge that pull request. I'll confirm the merge. And the merge has been added. So we've taken our development branch 
and merged it into the main branch. So I'll delete the branch just to keep it clean. But now if we go back to the code, we can see that all of the code in the main branch has been updated. And so when we use production, we're gonna use that main branch. So let's switch back to DBT. And now we wanna create an environment for our production environment. So we'll go to deploy, we'll go to environments, and we'll notice we have development here, but we wanna add a new one. So I'll click plus environments, I'll give it a name, this case production. I'll select production or it's already been selected for me. And then I'll select the connection that we created earlier. So uh, we already have some of this filled in. For example, our account information, the role, the database, and the warehouse. But in this case, I wanna separate the two to showcase that in Snowflake compared to other environments, you could use a completely different resource or decongest the two resources. For example, if you have a user building a lot of things in development, you don't want that to affect production's workload, curating those models on a regular basis. So we use the production warehouse, and then we'll wanna set up some deployment credentials. So you could use username and password or key pair. I do have a tutorial uh, in Snowflake um, or in the Snowflake documentation for how to set up keep fair, feel free to use that. But in this case, we're gonna keep it simple and use username and password. Now, again, we set this up earlier. So in this case, it's the user is D, uh, service dbt and the password was password one, two, three, four. And here we'll wanna add a schema. So what do we wanna call this in the dbt, uh, dbt database? In this case, I just want to call it production. So everyone knows, hey, this schema is production. So if you're going to pull data, I would pull it from the production data and not my development environment. So we'll click test again. And we've successfully connected. So what we'll want to do is click save. And so now our production environment is set up, but we need to run something inside of it. Just like in development, we ran the dbt job command to build everything. We're gonna do the same thing, except it's gonna be called a job now. So we'll go to deploy to jobs, and then we'll create a new deployment job. So in this, in this page, we'll wanna add a name to it. In this case, I'll just call it full build because the command of dbt build will build everything. Then we'll select an environment. In this case, production has already been selected and we'll wanna select generate docs because later on in the tutorial, I'll just showcase how we can access those models that we've created or the documentation from those models. We'll generate that. Then we'll wanna run this on a schedule because now we're in production. We want this data to refresh every 12 hours, maybe 24 hours, uh, maybe only during the weekdays. We can select that all here. Great. So we're happy with all of this. We'll click save and then we'll want to run the job. So you could either run it on the schedule or wait for that schedule to occur, or you could simply run it. So I'll click run now and we could see that a run has been scheduled here. So I'll click on that run and we'll get to see all the steps of this job running. So some of the steps are let's clone the, the main branch from the Git repository. Let's create a profile from Snowflake connection. Let's run some commands to get dbt set up. And then let's run that dbt build. And then finally we'll run the dbt docs generate to generate our documentation. So I'll keep clicking reload until we're finished. And we're finished. And so that happened roughly within 36 seconds. But if you had a lengthier job um, with a lot more models, this could take some more time. Great. So let's switch over to Snowflake and let's see those production data sets built. So if I close out my development and do a quick refresh, we'll notice a new schema has been added called production. So we'll click on production and we could see our two models that we tested in dev, merged into the main branch, and then ran on a on a production environment, a production job, which curated these tables for us. So if your goal was to you know, have dbt production set up and working, 
Then you could finish the video here. The last portion will be to just be able to click the documentation and see that documentation. So to do that, it'll be a few steps. If we go back to our documentation, we scroll all the way to our documentation section. What we'll want to do is click the bottom left hand corner of our account, go to account settings. So I'll switch back to my DBT account. I'll click account settings and then we'll switch back to the tutorial really quickly and we'll want to select our project. So I'll go back to our account. We'll go to projects. We'll select our project and then we'll want to click edit. So we'll give our project a name. The reason we give it a, a disc or instead of giving it a name, we give it a description. The reason we give it a description is because it will error if you try to save it without one. So it'll be first or demo DBT uh, project. Then what we'll want to do is select the documentation dropdown and we'll select that job that fully builds on a regular basis. Then we can simply click save. And now we've configured our, our project to use that build. So anytime it runs, any code that gets updated, any documentation gets updated, it will automatically update the actual documentation tab. So to get to the documentation tab, we'll simply click documentation. It'll open up our documentation and we'll notice we have a my new project. We have models, example, and we can click on my first DBT model. So we could see the actual model here. If we had any documentation on columns, for example, this ID column, the primary key of this table. So we could see for all of our columns what that documentation is without having to go into the code. This would be really, really great for those analysts who aren't necessarily building models in DBT but need to understand those models. And if we wanted to see the model lineage, we could see my first model is going to my second model or being referenced by it. So this has been DBT development and production connected with Snowflake. Thank you for watching.